All right, well, welcome everybody on the call today. Uh, if this, you're new to the call, we did have some new guys reach out to get on this call. Uh, my name is Brian McKenzie. I have the privilege to serve as the director of football for the Fellowship of Christian Athletes in the Midwest, Midwest region and beyond that. Um, and want to welcome you to FCA football's eighth edition of the Heart of the Coach. And our hope is the Heart of the Coach is just going to encourage and equip you as a, a coach uh, as when the Lord brings us back around. But right now we can continue to coach, even though we're not coaching on the field. Uh, as Coach Jackson said last week. Um, but we want to do that um, by interviewing a coach. And we're doing this basically three days a week, sometimes four. And this, uh, all the rest of the additions, except for the first three, can be found on the um, FC Football YouTube channel now. So if you missed those, you can go back and watch those. But today's guest is my good friend, Sean Watson, who is the assistant head coach and quarterback coach at the University of Northern Iowa. Sean, welcome to the Heart of the Coach today. Thanks for having me. Well, great to have great to have you. Sean, just tell us a little bit about your family first before we dive into some football stuff. Okay. Uh, well, I've, my, my head coach at home is uh, Anita, and she keeps me straight and keeps all of us straight, which is a full-time full -time job. Uh, we've got, um, you know, three kids. I have my daughter, Amber. She's uh, 37. She lives in South Lake. I have two grandkids, um, Caden and Maggie. And then they're, my son-in-law, Marcus, actually was one of my quarterbacks at Southern Illinois. And I didn't have any idea that the two were dating until about two years later. <laughs> so anyway, it was a home run for us because Marcus has been awesome. And then uh, we have our oldest son, Aaron. Uh, he's... Uh, you know, he's kind of still yet in the football business. He's uh, 30, uh, 34 years old. He's down in Orlando, Florida, working for AK Solutions, which is uh, doing some unique things with our industry in football from a teaching aspect. And then uh, my youngest son, Adam, is 32, and he's uh, followed my son-in-law, and they're uh, both of them in the Navy and uh, in a special community there. So that's my family. That's awesome. Well, Sean, we'll kick off with a with a, uh, a football question. I think the same question I asked Coach Osborne yesterday. What's the greatest football game you've been a part of, and why why is that? I tell you honestly, two of them come up, but uh, I, the one that uh, you know, the one that really you know was I, I you know I cherished because of a lot of things that went into it was uh, uh, the Colorado Nebraska game in two thousand one. Uh, Nebraska came in, they were number one in the country and uh, number one defense in the country. And we, um, you know, they were, they were the, the bar at that time in the, you know, the, uh, you know, it was the big 12 North at that time. And we, um, we ended up winning the game 62, 36, and it was just a unique experience all the way through um, with uh, the kids. Um, you know, I worked for Gary Barnett at the time who was, uh, an unbelievable uh, head coach, um, just uh, the way he could bring lives together, um, you know, and just get everybody on the same page, headed for the same goals. Uh, he did a tremendous job building the program there. And then uh, we had an unbelievable year, just, you know, we, we were a team that really truly loved each other. And it was kind of cool how the whole thing panned out because that was a huge game for us. And, um, you know, the kids obviously answered the bell and, you know, Bill McCartney was, um, Coach Mack was around us a lot. So <laughs> Coach Mack, uh, about halftime of that game, right before halftime, came up and I was in the press box and he lifted my headset off my ears and said, retire. <laughs> so <laughs> he's, uh, you know, he was really dear to our program too. And, uh, you know, just for a lot of reasons, but especially from a spiritual standpoint. And he, I asked him to be a life mentor for me. And he and uh, he he was gracious enough to you know meet me for coffee every Thursday morning and you know we had a unique experience there at Colorado just during those days so that was a special game yeah that, 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 I remember that game it was a pretty special game and you're right that was a big win for Colorado at that time especially with Nebraska's defense and all that that's great well Sean over the last five or six years uh, you you experienced some rocky times probably the most rocky times in your coaching career. How has your relationship with Jesus Christ kind of helped see you through those rocky times these past five or six years? Uh, you know, number one thing is I, you know, um, I know that everything happens for a reason. And I really trust, you know, God's hand 
in, you know, directing my life. And, um, you know, it's, it's been a uh, unique experience. I can't tell you all the things that, uh, you know, he's really helped me see that um, I needed to get fixed, uh, you know, from a uh, personal standpoint. And then, you know, I think to be better for him and the purpose that he has for me in this profession. Uh, when I got in it, <clears throat> I got in it uh, basically because I did, I love the game, I, I, I tr like we all do, I love the game. But I also had some unbelievable coaches in my life. I had Ray Dempsey, I played at Southern Illinois, who was uh, an unbelievable human, you know, he's, 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 a, he's a cornerstone in my life. And Jim Caldwell was my position coach. So I had some great examples of men that, uh, you know, were built on something firm. And I got into coaching because, one, I did love the game. And two, I really did because of their example. I wanted to help young people. I had a heart for them. Um, my dad had a construction business. I could have easily went into that. And I was raised to take it over. But... Um, you know, by him and by my grandparents. You know, my mom, uh, you know, I, I'll never forget it. <clears throat> it was a turning point in my life uh, when I was going away for, to college. She said, hey, listen, this business, uh, <laughs> you know, you don't have to come home and do this. You know, God's got a purpose for your life. When you find it, you chase it. And I did. And I, and I found it, you know, through, you know, the example of the coaches in my life, coach, uh, you know, Mike Deck, who was my high school coach, um, you know, coach uh, Dempsey, and then, you know, coach uh, Caldwell, who's my position coach. I mean, unbelievable examples, uh, pillars in my life. Uh, and that's, that, that's been, you know, um, their example, my love for the game was, and, and just really, really wanting to help kids, uh, you know, share my heart and, um, uh, I've, I've tried to always just live by my heart, you know, I, you know, just live by it, trust it, you know, and, um, you know, it's been a, I haven't ever looked back on it. I, it's, you know, I tell people all the time, I've, um, you know, I'm like Peter Pan. I've done this 39 years, but I haven't worked a day. So, you know, rough spots, they don't, they don't bother me because what, you know, God's purpose is for me, <clears throat> my why, is always been the kids. And I've been able to get through everything because I understand um, I get more out of giving than I do getting. And I just love that part. Yeah, love it, Sean. And that kind of goes with a real similar question I was gonna ask you, and you kind of answered this a little bit, but you know, the privilege last year to be at University of Georgia um, as a senior offensive analyst. And um, then you chose to, get back on the field and go to you and I. And, and my guess is that has a lot to do with it. Oh, it does. It had everything to do with it. You know, I had a great relationship with Kirby, you know, grew a great respect for him. Uh, the program he runs, the detail at which he runs it at. We had some, I learned a lot of football. Uh, you know, I've been doing it, you know, like I said, this will be my 39th year. And, you know, honestly, I learned a ton of football. And we just did some things unique together. So I was really happy in the off the field stuff. Um, but I have a heart for two things. One, I have a heart for the kids still. I love the kids, man. I, I love developing the kids. And, you know, the quarterback aspect of it is one thing. But the person aspect of it and seeing the men that they grow up to be is, is the real why. <clears throat> and then... I, you know, God's given me a real heart for young coaches, a true heart for young coaches. Uh, our business has a lot of noise in it today. And some of that noise, I feel like sometimes is white noise, man. It's deafening. And um, it's not about the right things and we can get lost in it. So, you know, for all those reasons, I wanted to get back and I wanted to get back in my element. You know, my element is with the kids, my element is with the coaches and grinding things out and being an example and teaching. I love to teach. Uh, and that's the reason I, you know, I think that's what my mom saw in me when I didn't see it myself. You know, <laughs> she saw that I, I truly love to teach because we all are, are teachers. And um, football obviously has given me a chance to not only teach the game I love, but also teach life lessons that I've learned from you know, from the people who've impacted my life, um, there's been so many, and then 
you know, what I, my heart for the Lord and, and what his message, his, his purpose is for my life. Well, Shawnee, I know you love to teach and you, you've had the privilege over the years to work with a lot of quarterbacks. That's kind of been your thing. Uh, um, and what are, what are the, there's coaches listening here and they all want to develop quarterbacks, right? Wherever, wherever they're at, what are the key foundational principles in developing a quarterback to reach his potential? You know, there's so many, uh, there's so many things. I tell you where I really, a couple of places I start off with. The first place I start off with is, you know, the leadership aspect of it, you know, being a servant leader. Um, because all quarterbacks, you know, I like it in my room that, you know, here, for example, sitting in my room, I'm trying to hire three assistant coaches. And like we are as coaches and we should be as servants. And um, I try to, you know, servant leadership is huge. And that means you, you know, you're willing to come in and do what it takes to be, to, to chase, you know, to chase excellence. And that is, um, you know, in, you know, developing yourself in the football management aspect of the game, which I think is huge for a quarterback, learning situational football, you know, how to manage red zone, how to manage two minute, how to manage, you know, desperation football. Uh, how to manage uh, four-minute offense. I mean, the little details that really, honestly, I think is what makes an elite player. And it has obviously talent and skill set, all those things play into it. But you can, you know, I've had some guys, uh, you know, I had, I can, you know, great kids. I mean, that haven't had maybe an arm talent of a Teddy Bridgewater, but they were and effective because they poured himself into those aspects of it. So I'm big on, you know, those, you know, teaching the, the game from a, you know, from a management aspect, uh, teaching the game and the details of it, uh, teaching the game. Uh, of aspect, the second place I start and really where I start on the board is teaching defensive football. Um, when I was at Miami of Ohio, just a real quick story, I had uh, Coach Weeb Eubanks, who was retired and actually lived three houses down from me, unbeknownst to me. When I found out about it, Randy Walker was the head coach at the clinic. I had to find a legend speaker. My uh, realtor, who was a good friend, he was the keeper of the cradle of coaches there. Bob Schutte says, hey, well, Coach Eubanks just lives three houses down. Oh, so a pretty good guy. He's got a bust in the Hall of Fame. Long story short, I went and Coach Eubanks then became, uh, you know, he spoke for us and I asked him to be my quarterback mentor. And he's a great quarterback coach now. He had Johnny Unitas, Joe Namath. I mean, he was like the first guru, or one of the first gurus. He didn't say Gilman. So Coach Eubanks was with me uh, for five years, but three years almost a day-to-day -day basis and taught me how to teach. And he taught me to begin with, with uh, is to teach the why teach defensive football. I jump in the cl classroom, first time he's in there, and he's, uh, I start off, guess what? A pass, pass play. He goes, he goes, son, you've got this all wrong. <laughs> he goes, they don't know why yet. You got to teach them why. So aspect of it would be second. And then, um, you know, how to prepare would be the third thing. And then when we get on the field, uh, you know, developing a one-piece passer, a guy that can get to balance smoothly and quickly, letting his eyes lead his feet. Um, you know, those are the things I really, because I love fundamentals and technique. I pride myself on always researching and trying to develop myself uh, because you're never done. After 39 years, I'm humbled that I keep learning, man. I find somebody, I latch on to them and, and I let them teach. And uh, so that fundamental aspect of it's huge. Uh, just had a unique experience. There's a, a guy who's in his 80s, his name is uh, Bill Montjoy. And Bill actually coached uh, with the Redskins, was a quarterback guy, helped Joe Gibbs. Uh, it's been, you know, he's still coaching today. If you talk about a guy who loves the game, I latched on to him because he is a great fundamentalist. I mean, he's got some of the old things that are still the good things. And, uh, you know, so that would be the next thing is the fundamentals and technique and drilling those on the field. Yeah, great. Yeah, thanks so much, Sean, for that. I'm sure guys got a lot out of that. Uh, they try to develop and a lot of those things go even beyond the quarterback position. Those three sure. things go to every position. That's great. So, Sean, how do you want your relationship with Jesus to impact your players? You know, first, it'd be by, you know, my example.
just, you know, what they see <clears throat> day to day, that they know something's different and um, they feel a commitment. And they, <clears throat> The connection and the commitment they know is can't be from me. So it's uh, it just really opens up. Uh, I've just tried to live my heart, and it's really opened up uh, unbelievable doors. And I've had also I've had kids that have poured themselves into me. I mean it's. I had, you know, some unbelievable experiences with uh, young guys. Uh, Joe Clatt, who we get to see on Fox. Uh, Joe's the, you know, he's the lead commentary in college football. And Joe was, uh, uh, we had, you know, I had him his whole time at Colorado. He helped me as Teddy Bridgewater did. You know, Teddy was unbelievable too. You know, they're good Christian kids who had loved the Lord and who really, they were different. And, uh, you know, they, 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 their example to me helped me, you know, so it, it comes from us. It also comes from the kids too. And they really sharpened me too. Mm. Yeah. Good. Well, well, Sean, during this time, kind of away from the normal activity, things at football and all the normal activities that we normally do in this time, what's the Lord been teaching you? Maybe one big key thing he's been teaching during this time. Well, you know, we've, you know, it's, um, it's really, it's been, it's been a really awesome time. And I say that because we've had to do things differently than we, we, we know, than we're accustomed to. You know, I probably have had, you know, because I'm new here. So I've had to, and I was here like four weeks before all this happened. So I've really had to rely on uh, getting to know my kids through Zoom, <laughs> uh, through FaceTime, uh, calls, texts messages and uh, you know in a very odd way um, it's really I feel like you know it's really bonded us really it, it, we have a really good bond in that room and we haven't been there <laughs> with each other you know we've had to do it another way so I really believe you know again you know just being uh, it's just you know God can work some unbelievable uh, things out of adversity I mean, he turns everything into good. Yeah. And I think you get, I think the thing that I, I would, I feel their heart and I think they feel mine because yeah. it takes a commitment, you know, to, to really make sure that, you know, uh, the consistency, uh, you know, and the feeling for each other comes across, you know, during this. And I, that's been what I've taken away from this. Uh, it's been very unique about relationships you know so it's interesting most of us didn't do get to do spring ball didn't get to go, get to go recruiting do all the things that normally would do do it this time and and yet we're still living and some of us are living in a greater way than we ever had before because we really figured out it really is about relationships and you get a chance to invest in those things because nothing else is going on you can't do anything else but invest in that so uh, great you know, great truth there sean i think we've all learned that thanks for sharing that um, w want to ask you a uh, football question here. And, uh, so next year, September 26th, you may know who you're playing eight time FCS national champion, North Dakota state. All right. You battle them toe to toe the whole game. You're down by five, three seconds ago, ball on their 25 yard line. You got one play. What do you want to run? Uh, we're, we just actually uh, talked about that in our, one of our Zoom meetings last week because uh, we're right now in a kind of discretionary period in our part. But, uh, you know, it's uh, – we would – you know, we'd, you know it, I'm still getting to know these kids here in terms of the receivers. But, you know, we're going to – you know, we just talked about two different things. You know, there's the, the jump ball, you know, which you – you know, the rebound pass that you do out of a, a three-by-one set or the one out of a two-by-two two where you go to the middle of the field. The one I talked to them about is the one that's worked for me a lot, um, and that is uh, four verticals, think players, not plays. You know, you find your guy, and you get the ball to your guy only where he can make a play because you know he's your guy. Mm. You know, and you get it out on your feet on time. And, you know, that's been, uh, 
And, uh, you know, Zach Taylor did that for us when we were at Nebraska playing uh, Texas A&M, won us a big game there. Joey Gans did it the following year against K-State. Uh, you know, Teddy did it, you know, a couple times in his career. So that's been a, that's been a good one for me. Yeah. Sounds like Coach Ken Leonard's man offense, right? Get the ball to the man. Right. Yeah, just get the ball to the man. So. <laughs> get it to the man. <laughs> Don't make it complicated. I like that. That's good. Uh, well, maybe, hopefully we see that come true here uh, this fall on September 26th when you play those guys. Uh, they, 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 I, they want to, if anybody's an Iowa fan, um, I'm not sure if Iowa's the toughest game you guys got next year. South North Carolina State probably is. Uh, but uh, hey, I want to open it up now. Uh, we got some time here to uh, allow some of our viewers to ask some questions. So if you would like to ask Coach Watson a question, just unmute yourself and, and uh, shoot away. Coach, I have a question. You know, you've been around a number of spots. When you're looking at a position, how much does it play into it that there's other believers on staff that you're going to be able to to have those people, you know, to surround yourself with some witnesses? You're not alone. You know, it's um, for me. It's always been. I always wanted to know that the, you know, that I was going to be surrounded by good people. And when I say good people, I think that's where you find believers. Um, you know, it's, uh, in fact, I was just uh, counseling or, you know, helping out a young coach that's coming to my life. Um, he's a high school coach uh, down in Texas and, you know, he's got, he's thinking about, you know, he's trying to figure out what to do. He's got a job opportunity. And I told him, I said, listen, and he's thinking about all these things that really, honestly, you know, the salary, you know, <laughs> the, you know who they play, all these things. I, I you know, I kind of stopped him. I said, hey, man, remember what your why is. And the number one thing you need to do is you need to figure out are the right people there to allow you to continue to grow. There's a, there's the environment, right. To help you continue to grow as a Christian and also to shine your light, you know, and, and, you know, be an example of what it means to be a, a, a coach who, uh, who's coaching for, you know, for his why, which is, you know, God's purpose. Good, Good question. Another question. Hey, Coach, uh, I've asked this question a few times in a little different way, but when you, when you mentioned uh, getting in the room and teaching quarterbacks, I want to first talk about defense. So uh, what are some things that you're going to help that quarterback learn and understand about cornerback tendencies? Cornerback? Cornerback. You know, I tell you, you know, we, you know, one of the things when I start teaching defensive football, I did it the way that I learned it from Coach Eubanks. Actually, we start talking about, and these things don't get, you know, talked about enough. Um, you know, like gap control, contain, support, because support really is coverage. It all gets tied in because everybody's starting trying to do what? Stop the run. That's the number one thing. Uh, so when I get into the coverage aspect of it, and again, I got to give this credit back to where credit's due, and that's Coach Eubanks. You know, middle open, middle close. There's only two coverages in football. That's it. And don't try to make it any harder than that. <laughs> so um, the long story short, you know, we're – there's a middle open, there's a middle close. What's the pre-snap safety look? And then based off of the next look should be what the corners are. Are the corners in a cloud alignment? a potential to play cloud or are they, you know, are they going to be, you know, off and soft, you know? So there are a lot of things, you know, pertain to, you know, uh, from a split safety look, for example, common, you know, throughout, you know, college football, uh, you know, every rank of football uh, is, uh, you know, from a split safety look with mid-level safeties and the corners uh, in, you know, bump alignments, you know, you're going to get, you know, it's cover four. So, you know, just being able to identify and middle back ends closed, uh, you know, example would be if they're off and soft, you got a chance to get cover three or if it's, um, you know, if the corners are, you know, playing, you know, press bell, you know, is it uh, going to be a cover one look? You know, there's a lot of time I probably spend a, a vast majority of my time because we didn't have spring ball. Uh, I take the quarterbacks through quarterback school. I do it in the winter. I do it the uh, second time in, in training or in uh, spring ball. 
I do it the third time in the uh, June session of summer school. The fourth time they get it is in the July session. And then the fifth time they get it is in training camp. So by the time the season rolls around, they have a pretty good inventory about all these things. Because first time through, and again, you know, Coach Eubanks was a, you know, uh, he was an education major like I am. And uh, we wanted to make sure, you know, I, you know, he always would tell me, make sure that, you know, you present your information differently, but yet it's the same and you're getting the message across. You know, he would, his challenge to me was to become a master coach, which a master coach in his definition was real simple. It's a master teacher. So to answer your question, I don't want to get long winded about it. There's a lot of time that goes into, but yet at the same time, it's being able to streamline those answers where it's quick, fast information. Cause that kid's got, you know, three, you know, three seconds, figure it all out. And uh, that's why it's gotta be quick. It's gotta be fast. And, you know, I, I could put a clinic on right now and you're going to, you're going to bait me into, <laughs> you know, things because I love to share football. I do. I love to share football and I've been around some great teachers and I've just really articulated what I've learned from others. And then, you know, what I've learned from, you know, my bumps and bruises and, um, you know, really when it gets to the corner technique is I think today's game is big because of how defenses are trying to play, especially because in college ball, high school ball, we're playing on a hash and the boundary, what is our boundary? You're going to get a lot of different looks back there. So being able to discern those looks uh, are critical because you know, that's where the corner cats or crashes or uh, come from. And then to the big field, it's not so complicated. You know, they're, they're going to play off and soft most of the time. That's awesome. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Got time for another question here. Somebody else have another question for Coach Watson? Coach, what are your favorite power verses? Can you hear me again, buddy? I couldn't hear you. Your favorite verses from the word, just favorite motivation. You know, I tell you what, my, you know, my favorite, uh, I have, um, you know, my favorite, I'm going to give you my favorite story, one of my favorite stories in the Bible, one of my very favorite stories. And I think it really applies to us as coaches, is the story of Joseph. You know, here's a guy that was, uh, you know, sold into slavery, basically, obviously, by his brothers. And, um, you know, he was in prison. I mean, this guy is about as low as it can get. But here, in the end of the story, and we all know how it goes, he ends up, Pharaoh has him run in Egypt. And the lesson I've learned from that, um, is that no matter, you know, wherever we're at and whatever we're doing, if we're doing God's work and we're truly doing it um, for him, for his purpose, for his will, and we are a servant for him, he will continue to add to you and all the desires of your hearts, all the dreams that you have, all the things you could ever imagine will come true. Um, and, you know, it's, I think it's, it's one of my favorite stories because for coaches, because I think today, you know, I spoke of the white noise, you know, the noise is so deafening. Everybody thinks they got to go do this, got to do that. And really, honestly, just go be excellent where you're at. Go do a great job where you're at. And, you know, things will get added to you. You know, God's purpose, as long as you're serving him and your heart is into, you know, his purpose and his will for your life, you'll find yourself getting to the place that he has for you. Great, great question. Thanks, Coach Blank, for that question and the answer there, Sean. Um, well, our, our time has come to an end. Uh, thank for everybody being on the call today. I think we had over 50 co coaches on here from all over the place. So I know you were blessed by Sean's answers. want to encourage you here in the next week to jump back on the heart of the coach. Next week, we start with Robert Wimberly, who's the uh, – co-DC, a linebackers coach at Northern Illinois. Then we have Tim Horton on Wednesday, running back coach from Vanderbilt. Here's a new one for you. Just got confirmed yesterday. This will be a little different take. Kurt Warner, Hall of Famer, NFL player, uh, now with the NFL Network, will be on next Thursday at 11 a.m. That will be the only change there. And then next Friday, the uh, BYU's offensive coordinator, Jeff Grimes. So we got a great lineup for next week, and we've got lined up after that as well. So just encourage you to get back on. Sean, thanks so much for taking your time to share your heart with us. Yeah, thanks for having me, and thank you guys for what you do. All of you. Appreciate you all.
Well, God bless you guys. Have a great day.